Right. All right, welcome to another episode of Veg Network in Canada. We're going to start with our land acknowledgement. We wish to acknowledge, honor, and respect that much of the land we are gathered on is part of traditional unceded territories of many different Indigenous peoples of Canada. We have a very special guest with us today. She is the creator of a super probiotic coconut alt yogurt, a proud supporter of the dairy free and women of color business movements, business owner movements, a Simon Fraser University and University of British Columbia alum. And you can find out more right away now with the hashtag do your gut some good. We have the founder and CEO of Yogu, Jade Herman. Welcome, Jade. Thank you. So our first question for you is, I believe it's around 2017, but why don't you tell us more about your vegan origin story? Mm -hmm. So I had actually become vegetarian when I was in grade nine. So I think I was about 14 at the time. One of my girlfriends had brought in a book. Um, and it, actually, oddly enough, the, the book was called Skinny Bitch. And I, I, I actually despise the name of the book, but I understand why it was so powerful and changing people's you know thoughts about animal welfare and all this sort of thing um because i think when you play on people's weight sort of issues sometimes you can end up drawing in a lot more people than you would have maybe expected with maybe perhaps a vegan um a title or something of that sort so anyways i read the book and it was had nothing to do about weight loss i knew that wasn't the case but it had everything to do about you know, just like animal welfare. And it gave a lot um, of examples about hog farms and chicken farms. And it was just really mind blowing for me. And so at the age of 14, I literally remember coming home and saying to my mom, I'm going vegetarian. And I mean, at the time, I think Daya had just launched, um, you know, tofu was something that I ate, but like, veganism and vegetarianism was just sort of starting and I remember my mom being a little bit concerned because she wasn't too sure what she would make me and I assured her like mom I'm gonna be making my meals myself don't worry about it so this was a huge sort of responsibility for me to take on but honestly it was sort of this first dive into food and nourishing my body and really being this sort of conscious consumer that I really feel like I am today um, I really have a lot of respect for the foods that I do eat. Um, and I just feel like so much of that has come from this sort of journey of being a vegan and going on this plant-based sort of lifestyle. And so fast forward, I think about eight years or so, I then made the transition fully to veganism. And that was after spending a year living in France, eating really decadent cheese and yogurt and ice cream, gelato. And I came back and I just felt like something needed to change in my life. I was going through a really transitionary phase and I decided to go plant-based. And then shortly after I ended up getting a job working for Vega, which is a plant-based protein company here in Vancouver. So I started working for them and it was great because they actually had a plant-based chef that made us lunch every day, which was amazing. Um, and I feel like that really gave me so much inspiration for, you know, cooking meals at home. And so it was really easy to just sort of transition into this sort of lifestyle. And then I've just always carried it on and it's just become something that I'm extremely passionate about. I mean, my business is also a vegan business and that is also very much part of my life now. So, you know, it, it, it makes sense how I got to where I am right now. Um, and so it has just sort of been this journey over the past, you know, 10 plus years. That's amazing. Yeah, at least you made it easy on your mom and you said, I'm going to cook my own stuff. That's so amazing. <laughs> yeah. and then, um, the power of a uh, of, uh, community around you and the people that you're around to spur that on. Amazing. So you started to talk a little bit about your business and that's the second question. So what's your origin, uh, your entrepreneur origin story and is it yogu or was it something before that? Mm. I definitely had a few, well, I had one sort of business before, but it was like a fun sort of side hustle. It was actually while I was working at Vega, I had sort of like a vintage um, little company that I was running on the side, but Yogu very much is sort of like the first time I made one of my 
ideas a reality. I think that growing up, um, I always wanted to open like a vegan cafe or vegetarian cafe. And so, you know, it was obviously this, you know, time in my life where I had to go to university. I was just finishing up my studies. And so it never was the right time. And truly it was that, that time that I spent living in Paris that really shifted the trajectory of my life. Um, I love food. And so obviously living in Paris was this amazing gastronomic experience. Um, and like I mentioned, I was eating really decadent, creamy, thick yogurt. I think the French have really mastered that art and craft, um, along with cheese and wine and all the rest. But when I moved back to Vancouver and I went plant-based, I was really struggling with a dairy-free alternative and finding that sort of option. And, you know, I feel like I, I had it really good living in France, eating that really creamy, thick yogurt. And so I actually just sort of gave up yogurt altogether and, uh, you know, just still pursued the vegan lifestyle, but ultimately just wasn't satisfied with what was on the market. So I had always known about, you know, making coconut yogurt yourself. It always just seemed a little bit daunting to me. And it was actually when I left Vega um, that I had a lot more free time on my hands. And I just thought, you know what, I've got all this time, I'm going to start making coconut yogurt. And so I think I went and I got a can of coconut milk, got some probiotic pills, and I tried my hand at it. And it failed pretty miserably. Um, I remember the first few batches going rancid. And I was like, I don't know, this seems pretty simple, but yet I've managed to sort of screw this up. But that was really the catalyst for this obsession of mine, I would call it, um, to really just master a coconut yogurt of my dreams. And, you know, that meant thick, creamy, decadent yogurt um, without the the milk. And so I knew that there had to be a way to achieve this. And so I, I remember doing a lot of Googling, a lot of YouTubing, and I found that people were making coconut uh, yogurt made from young Thai coconuts. Um, and so I actually would go to the Asian supermarket, buy my own young coconuts, open them at home with like a big cleaver machete, and I would scoop out the meat, use the raw coconut water, and then inoculate it with probiotics. And that was sort of like the first time I had this light bulb go off where I was like, okay, like I feel like I'm really onto something. This is thick, creamy, it's got the taste, the texture. And so that's what I really just went off of. And that was actually the product that I launched. Um, first to market um, here in Vancouver, I guess back in 2018, I believe. And we ended up even getting into Whole Foods. We were in the farmer's markets with that recipe. Um, I remember it sold a 500 mil jar for $20.99, $19.99, something like that. <laughs> it was pretty bananas. Um, but really like the quality of ingredients was, it really warranted that price because there was so much labor that went into making one jar of yogurt, um, let alone the cost of the ingredients themselves. It was just a really premium product. And there was a moment where I just had to really sit with myself and figure out, you know, what is my mission here with Yogu? Like, what am I trying to achieve? And that was a really pivotal moment for me. I would say about a year after I launched, um, I knew that I wanted to make the product more accessible to people. This has always just been something that for me as a vegan, you know, I want more people to transition to this sort of lifestyle and to never feel like they have to give something up. And so, you know, I knew that I could be a part of that. But I also knew that a $20 price tag wasn't the way I was going to get there. So I sort of flipped the whole recipe on its head again. And I worked with a food scientist and we came up with what is now the yogurt recipe. So it, I spent many months trying to source a really great uh, fair trade organic coconut cream. I feel like I'm quite a stickler when it comes to coconut products. I never like the really artificial coconut 
tasting product. So finding a cream did take a while, just purely based, you know, from a lot of the samples I was getting, they had this overly coconutty taste, which I didn't want. And so we finally settled on the supplier that we currently use. And yeah, we were able to really slash that price tag more than half. Um, our products now retail for $8.99, which, you know, is really comparable to a lot of the other brands that are on shelves. And so that was just a huge win. And the feedback from our customers was just really amazing. It truly was in more alignment with what people were searching for. And I mean, some of my most favorite sort of comments and feedback from folks is, you know, when someone's not even vegan and they're like, hey, I was at, you know, a party with someone and they were sharing yoga with me and wow, like I had no idea it was vegan. Um, and that's always just such a, a win because it really just brings everything back to sort of why I did decide to pivot the business um, and ultimately just make this sort of product more widely available for people. And slowly but surely we are well on our way to doing that. Um, so yeah. Well, absolutely. It is not a replacement. It's not as good as what you could have. It's better. So, uh, and you also mentioned you can't do it alone, bringing people in and having a team and everything is how you're going to go further. So that's amazing. What are some trends in your industry? Mm, yeah. I mean, I feel like the dairy free, do you want to talk more about like the dairy free industry? Do you want to talk more specific to yogurt? Yeah. Specific to what you're amazing at maybe mm -hmm. what's, what's some trends you think and dairy free yeah. too. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've seen definitely a lot of brands like I saw Chobani actually recently they came out with like a full fat sort of like Greek style yogurt I think that you know more and more people are sort of over the watery options um, but that being said I think that something that I'm just really proud of at Yogu is that we do truly ferment all of our yogurts and that's been a huge eye-opener for me along this sort of journey, I think another thing to mention is that, you know, another mission that we have at Yogu is to really just change this sort of foodscape. And so what I mean by that is, you know, whether it's the transparency of our ingredients and what we actually share with our customers, for example, we actually truly ferment our yogurt. So we're not just, you know, adding some probiotics and some citric acid and saying it's yogurt, we're actually letting that flavor build through fermentation. And I think that that is so unique to Yogu, um, not only for like the great probiotic benefits, but really that's how we achieve that taste. And all of our product is craft fermented. So when I say craft fermented, it's like, it's done in small batches. It's not done, you know, the way that I think a lot of companies are doing that, doing it. Um, and I think it's just really a missed opportunity because people are demanding better products that taste good. I think that so much in the vegan sort of, um, the vegan categories of things, especially dairy and dairy-free yogurt, or pardon, dairy-free products and dairy-free yogurt, is no one's really been addressing like the flavor. I think that so many people are sort of, you know, hitting so many of the sort of um, things like, oh, it needs to be keto or gluten-free or whatever else, but they're not hitting something that is just so important, which for me is flavor. You know, if you're going to try and convert anyone or try and help anybody try and sort of convert over to veganism, um, you know, and we meet people where they're at. Like, we're not about, hey, you need to be vegan if you if you are consuming yogu. Um, but I just think that flavor needs to be the top priority. And so I'm seeing a lot more sort of going back to your question about trends, companies addressing the texture and addressing the probiotics and the health components. But I think that, um, you know, flavor is something that just needs to be really executed more and more. Boom. Everybody, you heard it here first because Yogu is a trendsetter in terms of taste. And uh, it sounds like ahead of the curve with sort of maybe like craft fermentation. That's really, really cool. 
Uh, you're like a scientist, I guess, part-time scientist, full-time scientist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, or surround myself around really great scientists. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that's probably more like it and better. Um, so, does Yogu? Uh, yeah, where where is Yogu going in the future? Like across Canada? Are you already are you already there yet? What's up? So we actually launched in Toronto this summer in July, which was huge. Um, I would say Toronto and Alberta. We've had the most sort of demand outside of BC. And so we just felt like, you know, there's never going to be a perfect time. We just need to do it. And so, you know, the ducks sort of aligned and we launched in July and it's been really incredible to just really, you know, we've always been big on just sort of like organic growth, um, you know, because we are a startup and we don't have a bunch of spend in that sort of area yet. Um, but it really, you know, just from people's emails and Instagram posts and stories, just really seeing how this product has changed their lives. I mean, people either say it's a game changer or it's life changing. And I don't take that lightly, you know, like if it changes your life or you say it does, um, that's pretty huge for me um, to know that before yoga, there wasn't an option that, you know, sort of checked all the boxes. And so it was really cool to see sort of more people have access to our product. We're going to be launching in Alberta very, very soon. Um, we have a lot of really excited Albertans who are ready for our product. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just be continuing to expand across Canada and then hopefully into the U.S. very soon. We already have some retailers that are really excited about our product. And so it's really just once again, getting those ducks in a row to make that all happen. Absolutely. Well, you're, you're definitely on the way. So U.S. watch out. Um, what are some uh, charitable organizations that Yogu supports or is that something coming down the pipe? Mm -hmm. You know, it was interesting. I was thinking about this question and um, I think that, so our, our whole sort of like mission is to make these sorts of products more and more accessible to people. So We've always just been quite grassroots about our ways that we really give back. Um, in Vancouver, for instance, there's a lot of community fridges. So oftentimes, you know, we'll go around and we'll just put, you know, product in these fridges or we'll donate them to various shelters. Um, during COVID, we did a lot to like downtown east side shelters. Um, and then to also, you know, families in need, because we just want more people to be eating these products, especially causes that, you know, have involvement with families and children. I do think that these sorts of products, um, especially Yogu, no refined sugars, it's a probiotic, it's dairy free, like, they're just so needed. Um, and then sort of like on the other side of that, there are a lot of really amazing vegan uh, causes that we often sort of donate things to um, for raffles or things like that. More recently, there was one actually, I think it's on Vancouver Island, but it's called um, Home for Hooves. So they're an animal sanctuary and uh, they, reach, they reached out and uh, we're really excited to be partnering with them. I think this month or next month, I'm not, I'm not too sure, but um, yeah, it's just also really nice to connect with other vegan businesses as well. Um, because I really just want to uplift them and be supportive when we can. Well, that's what that question is all about. Like there's no comparison and every little bit helps. Um, mm -hmm. Even sometimes businesses that are, are starting, maybe we talk to them and they're just folding that into their business plan or whatever. So that's amazing. And yeah, Home for Hooves, I think is now going from 70 animals to 170 and they're getting more property. And so there's a lot going on on the island for the mm. vegan movement. And you, you mentioned it before, there's not the seed capital yet, but maybe somebody watching this um, might have some other ideas. Um, what is a book, podcast, or app that you would recommend when it comes to entrepreneurship? Mm. Well, my favorite book, hands down, and I've reread it many times because it speaks to me differently every time. But Shoe Dog um, by Phil Knight. He's the founder of Nike. And, you know, more recently when I read it, I feel like we're in this really sort of big explosive growth stage of the business. And 
you know, there's been so many tests. I feel like the past three weeks have been a massive test for me of just, you know, grit, determination, all these sorts of things. And, you know, when I think about sort of shoe dog as this book, it's really just like, man, Phil Knight was thrown every curveball, everything. Um, and he still really managed to fight his way through and fight with, you know, this sort of integrity and, I just really respect his journey. And I think that, you know, I've, I've sought out a lot of podcasts, for example, NPR has a great um, series called how I built this with Guy Raz. I love that podcast because I mean, like anything, whether it's your mental health, whether it's just your journey in entrepreneurship, I think that when you feel less and less alone, <laughs> um, it's really helpful on those days where, you know, you're just sort of lacking that motivation and, so when I'm feeling sort of down, I'll usually just go for a walk and listen to uh, how I built this episode. Um, but also there was a phase where I was really interested in sort of uh, investment and funding. Um, and I really was just sort of seeking out podcasts and seeing like, okay, do people talk about this? And truly the answer is no. Like a lot of people don't talk about that sort of thing. I think it's very sort of specific to everybody's um, entrepreneurial journey. And so it was sort of like this question mark for me. And so I really just sort of sought out a lot of podcasts, but it didn't quite give me enough sort of golden nuggets that I wanted. Um, it ended up just being a lot more through conversations with various mentors um, and asking questions there. But um, yeah, I'm, I always have my eyes out for great podcasts. I've also been listening to Zach um, from the juice truck. Uh, they just started a podcast called um, something good. I, I'm totally a little more good. A little more good. Yeah. And it's been amazing too, because just to hear sort of more local stories. I love it. And then I also love that, you know, Zach and the juice truck and what they're all about. So it's really cool to listen to their podcast as well. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, speaking up to uh, speaking of other companies, maybe local, maybe global, maybe it is Nike, maybe it is juice truck, who knows, but what are some companies that you I don't know, maybe look up to, but more so like learn from and keep in touch with. I like that question. Man, I feel like, you know, it's a balance for me, right? Like I think that there's really staying like focused on sort of what your mission is and what your purpose is and trying to sort of not get too, um, too blunt or not sort of, I guess, like not staying on track. Um, but there are so many brands. I mean, locally, obviously, all of the amazing food options we have. Um, we partner with a lot of amazing brands like Mila, um, Alif, um, The Juice Truck. And so I love just supporting their businesses. I think that by sort of being in this local food scene, I have this massive appreciation for how much work it takes. Like recently I was at Save On and I saw Blue Hair and Cheese. And like, I had a moment where I was just like, wow, you know, like I know how much work this takes, you know, to get to where they are right now. And, you know, I, just to be able to support these companies, um, it's just really, it. I'm so proud of so many amazing local startup um, success stories and obviously being in a store like Save On, having that sort of accessibility as well was really cool. Um, and then I think just sort of like bigger brands, Patagonia has always been a, a company that I've always really looked up to. Um, I actually was currently, I was reading a book of theirs called uh, Let My People Go Surfing. And it's all just sort of about like the philosophy behind the company and so much of like that company culture. And as I really dive deeper into my business as well, that's something that I just become more and more passionate about, like really just making sure that my staff have this incredible space to come to and are really feeding their purpose as well as humans and as individuals. So yeah, that th those are some companies that I look up to for sure. 
For sure. And what I'm hearing is creating a collective why and then empowering people to have their own why within or outside of that as well, too. So that's fascinating. Yeah. Um, we're here at last question before we kind of outro you and bid you adieu and let you get back to what you do best. So that last question is always prefaced by this is not the time to be humble or modest. It is, do you have any advice for entrepreneurs who might be at the beginning, middle, or even at an exit? Hmm. So many, but, uh, yeah, they, you know, you take these little golden nuggets every day. I think there's so much learning and there's so much sort of like dusting yourself off. But I think, you know, for those entrepreneurs that are just getting started, my advice would be to just start. Uh, don't look for sort of the perfect anything because realistically, if I'm being all honest, nothing was perfect when I started. It was like, you know, we were constantly evolving and we still are constantly evolving. I think that, you know, getting started is the hardest part. And so much of it is sort of that internal voice and, you know, whether it's confidence, any, anything inside of you, that's just like, no, you shouldn't start. Um, so yeah, just start. And then when you're sort of in the thick of it, I mean, for me, it's really ironically to trust my gut. Um, you know, I think that we make probiotic yogurt, but constantly I'm like, man, I just, I should have just trusted my gut, <laughs> you know, like I'm feeding it all the good stuff. Like, why am I not? And so it's become like this daily practice for me to not only tune into that sort of internal voice, but also to, you know, action that as well. Um, so even if I might feel it, like I actually need to, you know, put that to practice. Um, but sometimes it's harder said than done. So, you know, that's just been huge. And I think there's so much noise when you're starting a company, everybody wants to be of service and everybody wants to give you their, their, their version of things. And I think sometimes you always know what feels right. And so it's really just taking that time to really sit with that. Um, and then I think also it would be to really just have a balance. Like for me, I, I sort of, I have a business coach and we talk a lot about sort of this balance and peace in my life. Um, because that's what I'm always trying to cultivate. And sometimes entrepreneurship can just be the exact opposite of that. But if I implement, you know, daily rituals and habits into my life, that sort of keeps everything a little bit more even. Um, so I don't think it's selfish to take time for yourself. I think that, you know, I'm always working, but if I can sort of slot those little moments into my life, it just makes me a better person and a better leader. Well, you heard it here, folks. Keep it simple. Just act, just start. And uh, yeah. if that if that isn't or hasn't already been a marketing campaign for you, trust your gut. Now it is definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so everybody, if you want to find out more, you can find out about uh, more about Yogu and Jade's story on the web. Uh, that's yogu.ca. So that's y-o-g-g-u.ca and more on Instagram at yogu. Again, y-o-g-g-u.foods. So on Instagram, it's yogu.foods and on the web, it's yogu.ca. Thanks so much for joining us, Jade. Thank you so much, Justin. Okay, bye everyone. So nice to meet you, Sandra. So